When it comes to desktop Linux, there is a certain group of people out there, a certain percentage of our desktop Linux user base that really wants to get the most performance out of their Linux distribution. They want the most speed, they want the most optimization. And you know, there's a lot of people out there that I get this question all the time. Uh, what is the best Linux distro for me to install that's uh, not bloated? You know, what's an unbloated Linux distribution? What's a lightweight distribution? What's a minimal distribution? What's the distribution that's going to give me the best performance as far as speed? A lot of people want to know what is the fastest Linux distribution? And there's no real answer to any of these questions because any Linux distribution can be as lightweight or as minimal or as fast as you want it to be. And any Linux distribution can be bloated as hell and slow if you choose to make it such. And I think this is something that a lot of computer users just don't understand that, you know, it's not necessarily the operating system itself as far as the underlying technology of the operating system. A lot of it is what are you installing on that computer? What are you trying to do on that computer as well? It's very hard to have a lightweight, minimal, fast Linux distribution if, for example, what you plan on doing on that distribution is compiling software or rendering video, video editing, you know, things like that that take up a lot of system resources. You know, it would be very hard to create a Linux distribution to do all of that stuff and then call it a lightweight or minimal distribution. There's no such thing, you know, and not for those kinds of tasks. Now, if all you want to do is launch into a TTY and use your basic GNU core utils, you know, your standard command line applications, yes, you can get a very lightweight, minimal, fast distribution if that's all you want to do on that particular Linux distribution. But again, a lot of it has to do with what you're trying to achieve on that computer. And what I want to do today is I actually want to break down three of these terms that people often ask me about. Uh, we're going to break down what it means to be a lightweight Linux distribution, what it means to be a minimal Linux distribution, and what it means to be a fast Linux distribution. And there is some overlap between these three terms, but when people ask me, for example, what is a good lightweight Linux distribution, I'm thinking of distributions as far as being lightweight, they are things that are not going to have a ton of extra services already installed and configured. For the most part, they're probably shipping very vanilla base packages of everything. They're not doing a whole lot of customization, right? That's to me, when I think lightweight, I think of you know, that sort of thing. Like, hey, if you want all of this extra stuff that you expect to have a proper desktop experience, you go and enable those services or install those extra packages and libraries or whatever. You know, that's what I think of when I think of lightweight. Now, when people ask me what is a minimal distribution, for me, it comes down really to one thing. Does it install a ton of applications, right? If it installs a ton of applications, which most Linux desktop distros do install a pretty good number of desktop Top applications, but many don't. You know, I'm actually one of the more popular desktop Linux distributions, Ubuntu, I actually think is rather minimal. When you do a standard Ubuntu install, it really doesn't install much. It comes with the GNOME desktop, but it doesn't come with a gigantic suite of software already installed. It comes with a few basic applications. You get your web browser, you, know, you get your file manager and your terminal, you know, your preference applications and things like that, but you really don't get a lot of extra stuff. You know, back in the day, I remember when I first became a desktop Linux user and Ubuntu was the first distribution I installed, it used to ship out of the box with an office suite, open office at the time it used to ship with GIMP out of the box. You know, they used to ship with a lot of really big programs. And a lot of these programs for most computer users, desktop computer users, they're never going to use something like GIMP. Most of them will never have the need. LibreOffice or OpenOffice back in the day, such a huge office suite, right? That, you know, 99% of people really don't have a need for. I mean, maybe they'll do some basic word processing, but a standard plain text editor typically is just fine for most people. So when I think minimal, it's, hey, does it install, 
you know, the bare minimum amount of programs for you to do basic desktop work. You know, essentially, does it install a browser, a file manager, a terminal, maybe a plain text editor, right? And a few other things. But I don't need like the entire kitchen sink of applications pre-installed out of the box. That's what I think when I think minimal. Now, the last term uh, being a quote, fast Linux distribution, that one's a little harder to pin down because, I mean, really, what does that mean to be a fast Linux distribution? Well, for me, I would say it means being light on resources or, or as a small on especially CPU and RAM usage as possible so that when you're using your actual desktop applications, you know, there's more CPU and RAM for those applications to use because you're desktop environment and all your background services aren't using so much of that CPU and RAM. And a lot of the people that ask me about fast Linux distros, what they're usually talking about, they're usually talking about performance and especially they're talking about performance when they're gaming. It's usually the gaming crowd that asks me about, hey, what's a fast Linux distribution? It's basically, hey, I want to play all of these AAA games on Steam and some of them kind of run like a dog, you know, is there a distribution that will make it run better than the distribution I'm currently trying? And typically the answer to that is no, not really. Like right? they're all the same, right? Any Linux distribution is going to be running the same kernel, same drivers for the most part, same Steam and the same Steam games, right? There's not a lot of difference and there's not a lot of differences that are going to make a real performance increase. A lot of times, when people are asking, hey, you, you, I need a fast Linux distribution, a lot of it is you just need better hardware for the most part. A lot of it is if you're running a really old machine, especially old laptops, and you're trying to game on it, for example, the CPU on many of those machines is just not good. Also, these days, AAA games... I recently ran into this problem on my home computer. I have a pretty nice uh, computer. You know, it's not garbage. It's not a potato, but I only had 16 gigs of RAM in that machine. And I noticed on some games I played, 16 gigs of RAM, nowhere near enough. That's like, I, I was actually running out of memory playing some games to the point where the computer would lock up, right? <laughs> and, and, you know, this is very strange because, you know, just a few years ago, 16 gigs of RAM was seen as more RAM than you could possibly need. Now, I would say 16 gigs of RAM is like the bare minimum. If you're going to be a gamer, like I, I wouldn't even try to use less than 16. But honestly, if you can afford it, you probably need to up it to 32 gigs of RAM these days. Again, if you're trying to do those AAA games because they just use a ton of system resources. I remember when I first really got into Linux, I was one of these people that were really focused on trying to maintain a system that was as lightweight and as minimal as possible. I wanted as few programs installed as possible, as few services installed as possible. And I was always checking HTOP you know, and see, hey, how small can I get that, that memory footprint that as far as the RAM usage, how, how small can I get that? And for the most part, even today, you know, you can install a base Linux system with not much on it, with just a window manager only. Pick your favorite floating window manager or tiling window manager. And a lot of those things will be using under 300 megabytes of RAM or less. A matter of fact, I have got a, a virtual machine. I may uh, show some screenshots or a little bit of video here. I've got virtual machines of Arch Linux that I often install because I do a lot of work with Arch, right, as far as you know, some of the things I do for this uh, YouTube channel. I've got a VM right now, a base Arch install. I did the standard command line Arch install with nothing installed except the Qtile window manager as far as the only desktop application. I think I installed the Alacrity terminal as well. And, you know, when I check HTOP on that base Arch install, just with Qtile only, no background services and daemons running, you know, it uses like 260, 270 megs of RAM. You know, it's really, really lightweight. And that's Qtile. There are some window managers that get even smaller than that. Uh, one of the most lightweight window managers is actually JWM, which is a floating window manager. That's the window manager that Puppy Linux uses. And you can get down to less than 200 megs on like a base install using JWM as your window manager. But here's the thing. Just because you can install like a base Arch install or a base Gen 2 install or a base server install that doesn't have much on it and then throw your favorite window manager on top of it and you know, you'll only be using 200 to 300 megs of RAM. 
Yeah, but that's not something you can live in long term because there's nothing installed on that system and there's nothing running. There's no background services or anything running. You have to do more eventually to that system to make it usable. For example, even though I can create a VM of Arch Linux running Qtal using less than 300 megs of RAM, Qtal on this box right here, right, my main production workstation, you know, even when I'm not recording or not doing anything, just idling, it's using typically like one to one and a half gigs of RAM on my system, right? I have 64 gigs of RAM, so I've got a lot of RAM to give it, but it's using well over a gig of RAM with me doing nothing on the system. Why is that? It's because I have a lot of stuff running in the background, a lot of daemons and services. I have the Emacs daemon constantly running on my system, which takes, you know, three, 400 megs of RAM itself. And there's various other daemons running on the system. I have a lot going on, right? I constantly uh, am syncing with Nextcloud. I have the Nextcloud desktop client on my system. I got, you know, there's some stuff that I need to have on this computer to make it do what I want it to do, right? So I don't focus on making something so lightweight and so minimal that I can't use it. You know, I, I don't want to put a lot of extra unneeded stuff on my system, but don't be afraid to make your Linux desktop usable, right? If you need those programs and those services, install them. Now, for those of you that do want the absolute lightest and most minimal distros that are already pre-built you've got an iso you know, puppy linux i guess is one to go with there's also something even lighter out there like tiny core linux but that's you can't really use that as a desktop linux distribution it is so stripped down and so minimal uh, even the kernels really stripped down those are not those are not distributions I would ever recommend you to install as desktop operating systems, right? If you want an actual desktop Linux operating system that is lightweight and minimal, you need to install minimal distros. So distros that are command line installs and that only install what you tell it to. So that's going to be things like Arch Linux, things like Gentoo. Uh, maybe server installs, maybe install Ubuntu server as your desktop, something I've done many times. Uh, Debian is a great example. Install Debian as a server and then install just the packages you want on top of Debian. That way, you know, if you just grab like the standard Ubuntu desktop or the standard uh, Debian desktop ISOs or Fedora, whatever it happens to be, you're getting these pre-built distributions that already have a bunch of extra tools and libraries and services and everything installed. And that's not necessarily going to be lightweight and minimal. There's going to be some stuff that they've put in there that you may or may not need. So it's always best to build it from the ground up if you care about being lightweight, minimal, and in some cases fast. Take care, guys. Peace.